All right. So, and Lord, forgive us of any judgment, including judgment of ourselves, Lord. We release our, we let ourselves off the hook. I love me. Can we say that? I love me. And let's just say, Jesus, thank you for making me. Amen. Woo, seventh point, key. Some men's go, sins go for us, some follow after, we want ours before. What did you do with the teaching and the messages and the revelation you were given? Did you get some revelation on forgiveness? Did you get some revelation on how you're going to be judged? Did you get some revelation on any of the, Did anybody ever talk to you about problem solving? <laughs> did anyone ever talk to you about that? Did anybody ever talk to you about t uh, offense and so forth? It's like, uh, not that I recall. Well, let me just take you here. Let me, let, me re yeah, let me refresh your memory. <laughs> Let's go back here and take a look. Because on this day, you were given this message, and this is what you did with the message. Nothing. So what did you do with the teaching messages and revelation you were given? Matthew 13, 23. As, and the one on whom the seed was sown on the good soil, this is the man who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit, bringing forth some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. And I'm telling you, whether it's 160 or 30, that's better than nothing. There's a responsibility with what we're hearing. And that's why it says the teachers are under a stricter uh, judgment. Because if I'm standing up and I'm going to teach you guys, I'm going to teach you how to uh, uh, recite Psalms 23. The pe person teaching is responsible. And then the people listening are like, what do you do with that? You know, where's that? Where am I going with that? You know, you're not really helping them. And, I, and there's a lot of fluffy stuff out there. I'm just saying, there's a lot of preaching going on and it's words are going out, but we're not producing any fruit because you're not really giving any seed that's going to produce fruit. So the person giving it is accountable, but we're accountable for here, what we're saying. That's why all the teaching we've been doing, all the different teachings we've been doing, on the name of God and, and so forth. The father says, you need to stop and take inventory and realize you're accountable. But you also have to let people listening to you know that they're accountable for what they're hearing. So for those that just blow it off and say, yeah, whatever, you know, forgiveness. Yeah, right, not in my lifetime. Yeah, just blow it off, you know. You're account we're accountable for what we've heard. We need to do something with this. This is why it's good to, like I said, take notes, remember, meditate, call to mind, talk about, recite, uh, or, or like Cheryl, listen to the preaching 24-7. <laughs> is this the short, going to be the short message or the long message? I just need to know whether I need to go get a cup of coffee or, <laughs> you know. So, um, but... Um, <laughs> But we're, we, are, we're, we are accountable. And so what we have to do is say, okay, Lord, I, and, I, and this is me too. It's like, Lord, I can honestly say, I cannot honestly say that I can remember everything I've ever been taught. <laughs> I cannot remember all the messages I've heard. I cannot remember all the revelation that I've got. I can't recall it all. So I'm gonna ask Father right now for my brothers and sisters, together, Father, we come before you honestly confessing we do not remember every message. We do not remember every revelation. We do not remember every sermon, every teaching. We don't have a recall on all of those things. So we ask you to forgive us, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But help us, Lord, going forward. From this day forward, help us, Lord, to consider what we're hearing, to consider what we're hearing. And Lord, let that be good seed and good and honest and good heart. Lord, let it come in and bear good fruit in each one of us. Lord, we want that going forward. So help us to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So, yeah. the, so the past is gone. Whew. We just cleared that up. That's gone. Open up the book. Nothing there. Because we, we got the message. All right? So. Uh, I'm just going to say it. But yeah, no, 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 I'm please, the, please, the yeah, well, come, on. So come on, <laughs> come on, yeah, come um, on. And in fact, actually, that's really what I was just going to say, is I know that for every one, like, um, different things work better for others, and so for me, when I start taking notes, I miss, miss what it. they say, and so I'm like, dang it, and then I'm like, and then I'm like, and then as soon as I'm like, oh, that was really good, what was that, and then I'm like, what was I writing, I can't remember, <laughs> and then, but anyway, so for me personally, that, like, it's, that's not the most effective, but I know that like 
when when I hear beautiful teachings and messages that we have heard in Ecclesia and whatever, and Holy Spirit says that there's usually like at least like what you said, one key thing, Correct. sometimes up to three, but usually Correct. about one or two. Correct. That like the Boom. Holy Spirit will just be like, that's the thing. And then I'm like, awesome. Okay, what do I need to do with that? Charlotte said that thing and I could feel it. So what do I need to do, right, with that? And then anyway, and so for me, I do know, I mean, there's, we know there's a scripture about that, right? The Holy Spirit can bring those to things back to our remembrance. Correct. And so, and so to me, that's one of the, I mean, just one no, way. Oh, it's beautiful. You're absolutely right. Because uh, honestly, just human beings being who we are, you're not going to sit there and be able to recite a one hour teaching word for, we're just not going to be able to do it. But what you said is exactly right. And it's the right thing because that's being honest. That's having an honest and good heart. He said, have an honest and good heart. You're just being honest. And we, what, there's four different ways that people learn, right? And, um, and, and that's, and one of those is just having that capacity just to process while it's happening. And, but the beautiful thing is that you got it. If you got that one thing and it went in and it's bearing fruit, you got it. It's not an issue of remembering every 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 word. Yeah, Charlotte. There's a, there's something that encouraged me because I too I want to learn this stuff. There's so much. It's just like trying to eat out of a fire hose, <laughs> you know, and you can't swallow fast enough. But you know that all's life giving. But somebody said to me one time that it helped to release me. It's not how much of the word you have. It's how much the word has you. There you go. And if there's something we catch and can lay hold of, he says, think about these things. Yeah. So that we can chew what he's given us to eat on right then. Correct. And these other things, like you said, then we'll come back. So I didn't I didn't have to feel panicky about no. being dense or or no. we catch it. And and yet I want to hear more. But to your point, what you said too, that's why I appreciate recordings. Because when I listen to a message and I listen to it and I listen to it, then the things that percolate down through that I can catch and look at with notes, then I can assimilate it. That's why he says meditate on it. Yeah. Graham Cook's got your material. <laughs> <laughs> or. So, number eight, here's the last one key point of individual judgment. Number one, did you learn to love? Did you actually learn to love? That's huge. That's kind of the coup de grace. You know, that's sort of like at the end of everything. It's like, all right, you made it through point one through seven. Whew. Eighth question. Did you learn to love? Well, I learned to love golf. Uh, uh, I, I, I learned to love... Uh, uh, not lima beans. Uh, not lima beans. Uh, you know, but then, but then you could sit there and say, hey, hey, I, but I, I learned to love my wife. I learned to love my husband. Does that qualify? Huh? My dog. My dog. Yeah, I learned to love my dog. Does that qualify? He's, but then he's going to ask some questions. But, well, what about loving yourself? How, how, how'd you do? How you doing with love yourself? How you doing with love yourself? And all of a sudden you're like going, Oh, crud. <laughs> and I was doing so good. I was doing so good. <laughs> you know, uh, how'd you how'd you do with loving your neighbor, and how how'd you love how'd you do loving, how, you know, your Catholic brothers and sisters. How how'd you do with loving your Kenyan family? How'd you do with love? How'd you do with love that people that don't look like you and talk like you and fellowship the way you do? How'd you do with love? Or did you put qualifiers? I love everybody, but I love everybody if. Did you actually learn to love? Can you look yourself in the eye? I challenge you. Get in front of a mirror, look yourself in the eye and say, I love you. The first time that I did that, I was devastated. <coughs> I, I mean, I realized, because it happened surprisingly. Actually, it was a few months before I got saved. But it was the weirdest thing. I, for some reason, I'm just like washing my hands in the bathroom. I look up and it was like I looked into my own soul. And I went, whoa. But I felt compassion. It's like, man, you've been through a thing or two. And I felt a sense of compassion. That was just a few months before I got saved. But what I've learned over these years is, and we challenge people, you know, look in the mirror. 
Look yourself in the eye and you tell that person in the mirror, I love you. I care about you. You've been through a lot and you made it. I'm really proud of you and you're going to make it. And you're going to do great and awesome things. And I tell people, take your phone because you might start prophesying over yourself. And you're going to rise up in the power of the living God. And you shall go forth with might. And you might <laughs> but you're, you're prophesying. But I'm going to tell you something else. You look in that mirror and you look in your own eyes. And you look until you see Jesus looking back at you. You look in those eyes and then you see Jesus looking back at you. You've learned a little bit about love. You have learned a little bit about love because you just let him get very big inside of you. So did you learn to love? Bob Jones, the first question the Lord said he was going to ask him when he got in heaven. Was, Bob, did you learn to love? Can we talk about something else? <laughs> I got plenty of time. Uh, he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, uh, with all your heart, I'm sorry, heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. With all your heart, soul, and mind. Did you learn to love others? John 15, 28 through 29. This is my command, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Well, I do love one another. Everybody in my fellowship I love. I, I love everybody in my denomination I, I love. I love everybody at my church. So I've done that, right? <laughs> he said, love one another. He's talking about just love. Uh, Ephesians 5, 20 through 26, it, sounds, it starts off a little funny, but listen to this. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, just as Christ also does the ecclesia. When I was reading that, I'm like going, wait a minute, there's sort of a, a couple of things are happening here. Because are you talking about the ecclesia like your wives, or ecclesia is like you? created his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also did the ecclesia. Uh, so could it be both? I think in one way it could be, because I can feel that. So am I going to preach it and say, this is doctrine? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say this is doctrine. I'm going to basically say, what do you guys think? But for me, I kind of get this impression like it's saying, he did his own flesh and nourishes it and takes care of it. Because in a way, what he's saying is if you love yourself, you're going to love your wife. And if you love your wife, you're going to love yourself. And if you love yourself, you're going to love your wife. And that's just like Jesus who loves the ecclesia. What, oh, yeah. what do we do when one of or all of these areas are not right? We pray with Pastor Dan. There you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, this was uh, this is the confessional. Yes, Father, I have sinned. Uh, therefore, Acts 3, 19. Therefore, I re therefore, repent and return that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. <sighs> Thank God. There is nothing that has overtaken you but that there isn't a way of escape. And he is full of mercy and loving kindness and he does not want anyone to perish and he certainly does not want anyone to have to stand in his presence ashamed of themselves. He does not want that. And so what he's doing is he's bringing this message at this time to these listeners as we go on the internet. It's what we'll do on the internet. All right, so that's good news, right? Yep. That is good news. Uh, repent, turn around. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We just say that over and over again because that's the good news. So the enemy cannot come and point his finger at you and say, yeah, but remember when you said two years ago, uh, excuse me, boom, you're out of here. That's already taken care of. You cannot accuse me of something that's already been taken care of. So you, you are dismissed. Um, all right, so that's the good news, that there is forgiveness. It's simply saying, I am sorry, you're right, will you forgive me? Amen.